These five people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. You might recognise them as they are Goliaths in the world of television quiz shows. They are the Eggheads. And taking on the might of our quiz Goliaths today are Yulu Gamesock from London. The team share a passion for role-playing games and met at the University College London Games Society. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Natalie, I'm 20 and I'm a biology student. Hi, I'm Lauren, I'm 19 and I'm a zoology student. Hi, I'm Sam, I'm 27 and I'm a medical secretary. Hi, I'm Gary, I'm 38 and I'm an information and systems administrator. Hi, I'm Charlie, I'm 18 and I'm a philosophy student. So I see University of London Game Society is Yulu Game Sock. Tell me about these games then that you play, Natalie. Uh, we play a variety of role-playing games from Dungeons and Dragons to Call of Cthulhu, um, some Vampire the Masquerade. Basically, you just abandon your own life for an evening, take on a persona of someone else and um, tell a story. And do you dress up? No, we don't. <laughs> Not I thought game songs. But don't you just play Monopoly or Cluedo or something like that? No, nothing that mundane. We, we do play some board games and card games, but um, they're sort of more... Niche, I suppose. Mm. And, and how often do you meet? We meet once a week on Wednesdays. I see. OK, right, well, Wednesdays are free, are they? A bit, <laughs> bit busy next Wednesday. Um, OK, well, let's play Eggheads then, and you can role-play, you can do whatever you like, just try and get the questions right. Every day there's £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Eula Game Sock, the Eggheads have won the last 17 games, which means... £18,000 says you can't beat the eggheads. <laughs> yeah, buy a few games, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, nice. 18000 OK, let's play then. And the first head-to-head -head battle will be on the subject of entertainment. Who's the expert on this entertainment? Game Sock. Hi. Do we want to send you in, Gary? Yeah, do we want to send him in first? Send the big cannon in first. <laughs> Ooh. See, they were referring to you as the big cannon. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask curve. why. <laughs> um, is it going to be you? Yep. Okay. Gary. And who would you like to play from the Eggheads? CJ or Chris, I think. And Gary Chu. I'll say CJ. CJ. The little cannon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have you both into the question room then, please. Now, Gary, a.k.a. Big Cannon, um, you've chosen to play entertainment. I think that's a good nickname for you. You've chosen to play entertainment, but um, you'd be pretty good at science, wouldn't you? Especially the zoology bit of it. Yeah, well, I'd keep a few animals, yeah. A few? A few dozen? One or two. What have you got? I've got snakes. I've got about 16, 17 snakes. I've got rats, dagoos. Dagoos? What? They're related to chinchillas. OK. But well, small and brown. Keep scorpions and some spiders as well. <laughs> well, I hope you earn some money to pay for the feed here today. It's entertainment. Now, Gary, do you want to go first or second? I'll go second. You're in first then, CJ. Here we go. Who played the cooler king, Captain Hiltz, in the 1963 film The Great Escape? Steve McQueen, Richard Attenborough or Donald Pleasance? Uh, cooler spelt C W O L E R. Yeah. Um, haven't seen the film. What? Well, you, you know I don't watch films. I haven't, I haven't got the, the attention span. But um, what, what do you do on Boxing Day then? Um, I go to the gym. <laughs> um, but isn't Steve McQueen the one who always, always keeps getting sent down to the cooler because he bounces that ball against the wall, doesn't he? Um, actually, the. I know nothing about the film. I don't even know if the... Donald Pleasance is in it, isn't he? Is, isn't he the forger? Or is that an entirely different <laughs> film? I don't know. I'm going to go for Steve McQueen because I've just no okay. idea. I know he's in it. And you say he gets sent to the cooler because he bounces a ball? Something like that. That's yeah, because he tries to jump his motorbike over barbed wire fences and escape into Switzerland. Um, but he is the cooler king. Captain Hiltz is played by Steve McQueen. It's correct. It's a bit like a sport category in a very recent game, CJ, where you bumbled your way to victory you there. You mean where so... I got all my questions right? Yeah, let's hope it doesn't yeah. happen again. 
<laughs> All right, Gary, you're kicking off now. Your first question. In 2005, which cricketer won Series 3 of the television show Strictly Come Dancing with partner Lilia Kopilova? Darren Goff, Andrew Flintoff or Michael Vaughan? Well, I don't think it was Goff. It's a hard one. It's, uh, I would have to say Michael Vaughan. OK, uh, won Series 3 of Strictly Come Dancing with Lilia Kopilova. The cricketer in question is Darren Goff. Darren Goff won. Well, they yes, uh, didn't seem to have much hope at the start of it, but came through and won in the final. So it means, CJ, you can go into a 2-0 lead if you get this. Which US TV sitcom was based around a family with the surname Huxtable? The Cosby Show, Married with Children or Different Strokes? Yeah, that was the Cosby Show. Mm. On shorter ground now, <laughs> yes. American television, it's the right answer, the Huxtables in the Cosby Show. OK, let's get you off the mark, Gary. Who wrote the songs, I'm a Believer and A Little Bit Me, A Little Bit You, which were recorded by the Monkees? Is it Engelbert Humperdinck, Neil Diamond or Randy Newman? Oh, the Monkees, that's going back. But, uh, I think they were written by Engelbert Humperdinck. Well, I'm not 100% sure. OK, a little bit me, a little bit you, and I'm a believer. Yeah, Engelbert Humperdinck. Give it okay. a try. Engelbert Humperdinck, the hump. Um, it's not, Gary. Oh, it's I Neil Diamond. Yeah. Actually, Neil Diamond wrote uh, those two songs for the monkeys. So, that means it's all over. CJ, you've done it again. Well... <laughs> Second question, I'd give you that. You knew that, you were sure. But that first one, the great escape. You've never seen it. I've never seen it. You should get a couple of bottles of beer. Chris can have those. Sit round with Chris. He knows every single scene, off by heart, well, all the way through. Must have seen it about 25 times, yeah. Exactly. Fantastic, Phil. <laughs> That joy awaits you, CJ, and the joy of the final round will await you too. And Gary, unfortunately, you won't be playing there for the £18,000 today. Would you both please come back and join your teams? OK, CJ winning out in that head-to-head -head means that the Yulu game soccer one brain down from the final round. Gary won't be playing there. We move on to our next category today. It's science. Oh, science, as I was mentioning. You can't <laughs> play this, though, Gary. It has to be one of the other four. Who wants to play? Are you going, Nat Natalie? It's yeah. me, Natalie. Definitely me. OK, Daphne. Natalie, and from the eggheads, anyone but CJ? Uh, we'll play against Daphne. Daphne! OK, let's have Natalie and Daphne then into the question room, please. So, Natalie, you're playing science. You're actually rather over-covered as a team, aren't you, in the science department? You're a, what, you're a biology student. I am, indeed. Right, and uh, Lauren, you're zoology. Yeah. And, Sam, you're a neuroscientist. Yeah. Right. OK, well, apparently we don't have three occurrences of science. This is the only one. And um, Natalie's there playing it. Do you want to go first or second? I will go second, I think. Put you in first, then. Dr Daphne. Your first question. What is 13 times 12? 148, 156 or 162? 13 12s. I don't think you've got enough fingers. <laughs> it is 156. 12 12s, 144 and 12 more. Yeah, OK, yeah. <laughs> Could be Carol Vorderman sitting there. <laughs> it's uh, 156 is the right answer. Well done, Daphne. OK. And, Natalie, sure you would have got that, but this is your question. What type of creature is a lobster? Is it a mollusk, an amphibian, or a crustacean? What type of creature is a lobster? Well, it's definitely not an amphibian, because it doesn't have lungs and gills. And it's definitely not a mollusk, so it's a crustacean. Crustacean, a lobster, whatever it is, very tasty. It's the right answer. There we are, one each. Daphne, second question. In which part of the human body is the hypothalamus located? The intestines, the brain or the liver? That's in the brain, damn it. Yeah, that's right. OK, second question for you, Natalie. Won't keep you waiting. This will draw you level. What name was given to the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine in the White Mountains of California, believed by many to be the world's oldest known living tree? Methuselah, Elijah or Joshua? Trees Lawrence thing, I think. Um, 
That's tricky. Methuselah stands out for some reason. I'm not sure if it's right. Um, Elijah and Joshua just don't seem to ring right for a tree. I'm going to have to go for Methuselah. Methuselah, the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine. Is known as Methuselah. It's the right answer. Two to you. Well done. Work that out. Okay. Right, Daphne. Could sort out a winner on these next two questions. What is the everyday name for the material caoutchouc obtained from the tree Hevia brasiliensis? Is it India rubber, cochineal, or propolis? Mm -hmm. well, cochineal comes from crunching up beetles. I think propolis is that something to do with me, so I'll go for India rubber. Okay, you, you're going on the elimination route, yes. as I call it, yeah. rather than knowing the answer yourself. You can always do that, of course, when you've got the choices there. And you've got the correct answer. Thank India you. rubber. Kochuk. All right, you've got to get this then, Natalie, to take us into sudden death. Which American astronomer wrote the books Cosmos and Pale Blue Dot, a vision of the human future in space? Is it Carl Sagan, Frank Drake, or Peter Goldreich? Mm, I don't tend to read those kind of books. Um, can you give me a question about Darwin? That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> that might be coming up if you get us into sudden death. You never know. <laughs> Goldreich is standing out. Goldreich is definitely standing out. I'll have to go for that. Peter Goldreich. Peter Goldreich. Cosmos and Pale Blue Dot. It's not the right answer, Natalie. Do you know Daphne, if it had been your question? Yes, it's Carl Sagan. Yeah, Carl Sagan, I'm afraid there. So, Natalie, it means you've just been beaten there by Daphne. She's through to the final round. And I'm afraid, Natalie, you won't be playing for the £18,000 today. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Now, remember, you, Lou Gamestock, you're not role-playing here. You're not role-playing losing to the eggheads. This is actually real, so the idea is to try and beat them. You did very well there, Natalie, and bad luck there on the third question. It means, though, you have lost two brains from the final round. Two more head-to-heads to come. Chance to knock two eggheads out. Let's play another round now, and this one's geography. Well, I don't think you'll be playing it then. Lauren didn't look too pleased when I said that. <laughs> geography. But it's uh, Lauren, Sam, or Charlie to play it. So that's me or Charlie. So that's... You going then, Charlie? Go on then, Charlie. Go on, Charlie. Off you go. I hate all of you. <laughs> go on, Charlie. <laughs> Apparently, it's me. <laughs> Focus the anger on the eggheads. It's one of them you've got to beat. I'm trying to, but they're so sweet, aren't they? <laughs> Chris, Kevin, or Judith? Kevin Judith. Judith. Science, which means that he might be quite good at. Judith. Yes. And said that Bad very idea. quietly. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Go for Kevin. Well, which is it to be, Kevin or Judith? Kevin. Kevin. No. All right then. <laughs> It's fine by me. <laughs> All right, by you, Kevin. Yep. Want to play geography? Right, let's have you both in the question room then, please. So, Charlie, do you want to go first or second? I would like to go first, please. Right, off we go then, Charlie. Your first question. The flag of which South American country features a white star on a square of blue in its top left corner? Is it Brazil, Chile or Argentina? Well, I know for a fact it's not Brazil, though, because I've got the yellow and green one. But the other two, I'm not too sure, though, because I don't remember those two. I'm going to have to go with Argentina. Uh, white star on a square of blue in its top left corner. It's Chile, mm. Charlie. It's Chile, not Brazil. You were right about that, but not Argentina. So, early chance for Kevin. Kevin, Iraq has a small coastline on which body of water? The Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, or the Black Sea? Uh, it's on the Persian Gulf. Don't it? The Persian Gulf is correct. Yes, Kevin, one to you. Charlie, second question. In which British town is the Dock Tower? A 94-metre-tall structure built in the 19th century and based on the design of the Palazzo Publico in Siena. Is it Grimsby, Ipswich, or Brentwood? Mm. I'm going to go with Ipswich. OK, the dock tower, 94 metres tall, and based on the Palazzo Publico, 
is in Grimsby. Grimsby, I'm afraid. OK, well, that means that you've only got to get this correct, Kevin, to go through to the final round. The Fujita scale is used to measure the intensity of what type of meteorological occurrence? Sunlight, frost or tornado? Yeah, it's another one of these, uh, many of these different um, measurement systems for different types of tropical storms. And this one's, well, say tropical storms anyway. This one's for tornadoes. The Fujita scale? Yeah. And Kevin, the quiz tornado continues to blow. It's the right answer, Kevin. You're through to the final round. And Charlie, sorry to lose you. You never really got off the mark there. Two questions that weren't to your taste there. Means, though, you won't be playing in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, now, the eggheads aren't going to know what's hit them. You've lost three brains from the final round, but I know you're really going to take the gloves off now with this next round. It's history. Who'd like to play? And uh, Lauren or Sam? History. Okay. Natalie, you decide. I leave it in your <laughs> capable hands. I'm not first. Just leave it up to the dump captain. Dump our fate on me. Um, yeah, it's cool. Dump yeah, everything on you. No pressure. <laughs> it's gonna be Lauren. It's me. You've been chosen then, Lauren. Have you? I see you left it up to the captain. <laughs> there, left it up to Natalie. Um, okay, but I'm sure she'll let you choose who you want to play, and it's between Chris and Judith. Good guys, Judith. Judith, history. Of course, she won that million quid on a historical question. It's a very strong subject for most of the eggheads. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then, let's have Lauren, our zoology student <laughs> against millionaire winner, Judith. Into the question room, please. So, Lauren, you're studying zoology. What year are you in? I'm in my second year at the moment, actually. I believe it's reptiles you're particularly interested in. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. They've got such a bad reputation, but they're just, they're just amazing like in terms of evolution and things like that. Have they done much evolving? Well, they're just, they're just strange, like snakes, for example. No one really knows where they come from, sort of their origins. Are we talking eggheads or reptiles here? <laughs> OK. Right, well, let's play the game. Lauren, uh, do you want to go first or second? It's history. I'm going to be brave and go first. <laughs> Off we go. Which African country was originally founded in the 19th century as a settlement area for liberated slaves from the southern states of the USA? Is it Morocco, South Africa or Liberia? Well, I don't think it's South Africa because South Africa is meant to be Dutch. Um, Morocco, I don't think it's Morocco. I'm going to go for Liberia just to have a wild guess because I actually uh, it, I'm swaying that way. OK. That wasn't a wild guess. You worked out that, as I say, the, the other route. Can't be Morocco or South Africa. It's Liberia. Yes, of course it is. It's the right answer and a good start. Well done, Lauren. OK. And, uh, Judith, your first question then. What job did Wyatt Earp famously perform in the American Wild West? Lawman, army scout or rancher? Wyatt Earp? He was a lawman, wasn't he? I, you know, I love the way you always ask me a question back. I know, I know. I'm not going to tell you until, until you <laughs> well, plump I'm sure he it. wasn't a... I'm, I'm filled with doubt. Um, well, that's what the game shop want to hear. <laughs> um, well, I don't think he was a rancher. I think he was a lawman. OK, you've gone for lawman. Yeah. Wide up. Was a lawman. Yep, that's the right answer. One each. Back to you then, Lauren. Good solid start. Try this for size. The Battle of Kursk of July 1943 was fought between the armoured divisions of the German army and with which other country? United States, Soviet Union or France? Hmm. Kirk. How's that spelled, actually? Kursk. K-U-R-S-K. That's going to be the Soviet Union, probably, because it doesn't sound French at all. And I don't think it was the US, so I'm going to go for the Soviet Union. Soviet Union, 1943, yeah, that was a crucial date there. That's before D-Day and uh, after France had capitulated. Yeah, Soviet Union is correct. The Battle of Kursk. Well done, Lauren. So put you in the lead. Judith, to draw level, the Dam Busters Raid of 1943 primarily targeted dams in which German valley? The Ruhr Valley, the Rhine Valley or the Elba Valley? I think that it was the Ruhr. Because that's where all the industrial stuff was. Okay. Another 
Question from the Second World War and from 1943. Uh, it's the right answer. The Ruhr was the target of the Dam Busters raid. So two each. Good round. Lauren. Pride's Purge is the name given to an incident during the reign of which English monarch? Charles I, Richard III or Elizabeth I? Pride's Purge. Pride's purge. Well, I don't think it's Elizabeth I. Mm, I don't really know much about Charles or Richard, so it's a bit of a problem. I'm going to go for Richard, just on a complete whim. Pride's <laughs> Purge, OK, you think it took place during the reign of Richard III. He said it wasn't Elizabeth I. It's not Elizabeth I. It's not Richard III, though. It is Charles I, Pride's Purge. Uh, eggheads, any more about Pride's Purge? What was it all about? It was a purge of the, the members of Parliament. Pride was an army officer, so it was, it was towards the end of the Civil War. And it was, it was a clearing out of um, MPs who weren't considered to toe the line sufficiently. I see there we have it, Pride's Purge, which means you can win it, Judith, if you get this. Which inventor sought to demonstrate the superiority of his electrical system by electrocuting an elephant in Coney Island, New York, in 1903? Giulielmo Marconi, Thomas Edison, or Nikola Tesla? A horrible thing to do. I hope he didn't succeed. Um, I think it might be... I mean, who could be so horrible? Um, I, it's not Marconi, I'm sure. I don't know who Tesla was, but Edison is a great inventor. I think it might be him, Edison. I think Edison electrocuted an elephant in Coney Island in 1903. And you'd think, right, it is correct. Yes, Thomas Edison uh, tried that. Well, it wasn't more than an experiment, wasn't it? Uh, trying to electrocute an elephant. Did he succeed? Do we know anything more about it, Eggheads? Yeah, there is actually film in existence of it, and it, it's nasty, basically. Indeed. Well, there we are. Thomas Edison uh, was the inventor in question who tried that gruesome experiment in Coney Island, New York, 1903, which means, Judith, you've won. You're through to the final round. Bad luck, Lauren. Just the one question in it there. Sorry to see you go. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, this is what we've been playing towards. It's time now for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So I'm sorry to say, Natalie, Lauren, Gary and Charlie from the Yulu Game Sock, would you all leave the studio, please? OK, then, Sam, you're playing to win the Yulu Game Sock, £18,000. Judith, Kevin, CJ, Daphne and Chris, you're playing for something which money can't buy. The Eckhead's reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. This time, the questions are all general knowledge, just to confirm that. And you are allowed to confer. Sam, the question is, is your one brain better than the Eckhead's five? And Sam, what do you want to do, go first or second? I'll go first. Well, good luck, Sam. Just before we start, a bit more about you. You're, you're, you're a fan, I read, of steampunk. What on earth is that? Is it something Chris would be interested in, steam? It's um, sort of Victorian high science. Right. So, with sort of modern technology, but in the Victorian time and done in a very Victorian way. So, a form of science fiction, then? Yeah, a kind yeah. of science fiction, but with uh, like steam-powered... Uh, mechanical Babbage engines instead of computers and oh, things of that style. I think yeah. Wild Wild West with, with Will Smith, that's about the mm. best example in sort of broader popular culture. I see. Right, Sam, you've decided to go first. It's uh, general knowledge. Yeah. Good luck with it all. Just concentrate on the questions and who knows, you might be £18,000 richer at the end of it all. Off we go then. Sicko is a documentary about the US health system made by which filmmaker? Nick Broomfield, Michael Moore, or Kevin MacDonald? Sicko is a documentary about the US health system made by which filmmaker? Doesn't sound like something Nick Broomfield would have done. I'm not sure he would have used that as a title. Possibly gone for something aiming a little bit more highbrow. I don't think it's Michael Moore either. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think I know most of Michael Moore's work and I'm not sure it was him, so I'm going to have a go with Kevin MacDonald. Kevin MacDonald's sicko documentary about the US health system 
It was made by Michael Moore. Michael Moore made Sicko. So uh, nothing there for you, Sam. Michael Moore, not Kevin McDonald. Okay, Eckedge, your first question. What type of coffee is made by simply adding hot water to a shot of espresso? Is it Americano, latte, or macchiato? What type of coffee is made by simply adding hot water to a shot of espresso? That's an Americano, Dermot. Americano. Mm -hmm. Drink a lot of them, Chris? Not much of a fan of coffee. I'll I prefer you'd be a kind tea. of loose-leaf tea man. Yeah. Sitting on the shelf over the firebox door with the gauge lamps dripping in it. Yeah, lovely stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah, yeah, shot of espresso. Americano, it's the right answer. So it means, Sam, you're instantly on the back foot. But uh, let's get you back in the game with this. Which author wrote the Gormenghast trilogy? Edward Lear, Mervyn Peake or John Whitbourne? Which author wrote the Gormenghast trilogy? See, that one I know, so it's not too bad. That's Mervyn Peake. Yeah, a lot of fantasy there and all the rest of it, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, uh, Mervyn Peake, absolutely right. That was right down your street, Sam. Good one. So there you are. You're on the board. Eggheads. The poet Sappho, who lived in the 7th century BC, famously resided on which island? Rhodes, Kos or Lesbos? The poet Sappho who lived in the 7th century BC, famously resided on which island? She was a lesbian from Lesbos, hence the adjective sapphic. I see, OK. <laughs> Sappho lived on Lesbos, it's the right answer, eggheads. So, Sam, got to get this right and then keep your fingers crossed. Which actress played the role of Lady Bracknell in the 1952 film version of The Importance of Being Earnest? Is it Lillian Gish, Margaret Rutherford, or Edith Evans? Which actress played the role of Lady Bracknell in the 1952 film version of The Importance of Being Earnest? Well, there's a one in three chance of this being right, I suppose. <laughs> um, there is that. Can't say I've seen it. You know your probabilities. Can't say I've heard of any of them, really. Um, really don't have a clue. Let's try Lillian Gish. The role of Lady Bracknell was taken in the 1952 film by Edith Evans. Ah. Edith Evans. Which means, Eggheads, you've won. <laughs> Bad luck, Sam. I think, I really do think that if we just had an entire science, 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 science and science category, we, you'd we, have we hammered those Eggheads. Right, we, I think we over-specialised a little bit. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little unbalanced as a side, but great fun having you here and learnt an awful lot about <laughs> steampunk and reptiles and heaven knows what else. And the list goes on. Thank you very much for playing Eggheads today and uh, bad luck. The Eggheads, though, have done what comes naturally to them. That winning streak continues. I'm afraid you won't be going home with the £18,000, which means that the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, congratulations. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if the new challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. £19,000 says they don't. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye. BBC Two takes a trip from Glasgow to Edinburgh through the heart of the Highlands at eight in Coast. And at nine, the story of the First Crusade and the rift between Christianity and Islam still felt today in the Normans. But before all that, expert help for a wreck of a rocking horse on its last legs. The Restoration Roadshow from Lancashire, next.